So how do you interact with a Linux partition in Windows? There's a lot of different ways to do this, but ext4 is typically the one thing that you can do in Windows, but it's kind of hidden. So I made an article today. Let's get on the desktop and we're going to get in and review this entire thing. Let's not waste any time. Just look over the requirements. If you're on Windows 11, you're good to go. If you're on Windows 10, you're probably going to need a later version. Just do WinVer. So if you go down to run and just type WinVer right there, you can see obviously this Windows 11. So it's always going to be over 22,000, but older versions of Windows 10, I think it's 21 H2 or 21 H1. One of those uh, in the past year or two should be good. And obviously, obviously newer. The other catch to this is this is internal hard drives, so it does not count USB drives. Uh, it's just a limitation of Windows and NTFS. I'm going to probably do a video coming up about not using NTFS for Windows, which is going to be interesting because NTFS is just awful. No one likes it. So let's just first list the drives that we're capable of. Let's just pull up our PowerShell, paste that in, and you can see I have quite a few drives here and I don't know what's ext4, what's not. So where, where do we go for that? Probably the easiest way is just use a partition uh, wizard here and then try it out and, and look at each one. Using the disk management for Windows, it never tells you the type. Using uh, WSL for like BLKID doesn't work because it doesn't have access to the drives. So that's where we get creative. Like Ease US Partition Master, I've used that in the past. It's not too bad. Uh, personally, my favorite like mini tool partition free is probably one of the best ones. And we're just going to install install that let this go through and now we have our base install here and you can really see what each one it's reading so here's a disk 5 ext4 that's a gpt disk of 232 uh, gigabytes so that's something we can use uh, that's going to be the 960 evo 250 uh, let's pull this up rerun our command to list the disks. Let's see if disk five and this one matches up. There should be two partitions to this one. So some identifiers here before we switch back to our terminal is looking at this. This is the thing. I actually have another one of these. So how do I differentiate between the two drives? You could look at IDs. There's a lot of different ways of doing this. Probably the easiest. This has two partitions. This one does not. So if we pull this up, Okay, which one has two partitions? Well, here's one, and here's one. This is an 850, this is a 960. We're looking for the 960. Here's another 960, but that only has zero partitions. So it looks like drive four is gonna be our XT4 drive. Let's go ahead and mount that, but a lot of guides online will steer you wrong here and want you to mount a specific partition. Now you could do that, but I really like doing it all in Linux once I mount and give access to this drive. So looking back at our cheat sheet, there's something called a bearer mount, and that does not mount a partition. It actually just mounts the drive itself. So we're gonna go WSL dash dash mount, and then the disk path. This is gonna look like this, dash dash mount, and then we're gonna grab that disk with two partitions right here. We'll right click, right click, bam, and mount. Now this would mount, but it would failed. All right, that's fine. We forgot the bear command. All right, the disk is already attached. Let's go into WSL, or we could just click on the drop down menu and go into Ubuntu, the one I'm using right here. Let's do an LLSB. Okay, all righty. We have a 256. You can see this is the one that it's mounting. It has that two partitions. SDB2 is what we need. There is no mount point yet. So let's make a mount point. Uh, let's try just doing it in Linux first with sudo mount dev SDB2 MNT, and then we'll just call this one extra. And it says there's no mount point existing there, which is fine. We'll just make the directory MNT extra, rerun that command. And now if we go into MNT extra, do a listing. Oh, look at that. We have all of the, the mounts. And if we do an LSB OK, you can see that mount point there. So that's kind of nice. We can access it through WSL, but this isn't perfect because we can only access it in WSL. And if we pull up our Explorer, well, 
we still don't have any access to that ext4 drive in our windows system only the internal subsystem which is not ideal in some cases some people are you know crazy and want to actually edit their ext4 file system or access the files directly from file explorer let's do that now so what i'm going to just do is come back into here sudo umount then we just type that mount point like that and if we get a target busy, well, <laughs> time to reboot. It's Windows after all. Let's just give this a reboot and come back to the desktop. All right, back on our desktop, let's pull up our terminal once again. And this time we're going to just do our mount. Uh, let's first query, make sure that the drives hadn't changed. It's still drive four. Great. Let's, uh, we could mount it as bare or we could now choose a different path. And this is an interesting one. Now we can specify the specific partition. Partition one, we know is the boot partition. Partition two is the one with all their data. So that's gonna be the one we want to do. So before we launch into WSL, this time we're gonna go partition, and then we're gonna go partition two, not number one, and that should mount our EXT partition. Looks like it is successful. It says it mounted it under MNT WSL which is cool, but there's one extra thing it did here. If we pull up our file explorer by doing it through terminal, we now have on the left-hand side, Linux. And if we look at Linux, we should have access to that mount directly into here, which if we go MNT, WSL, you can see this is everything. So if we wanted to copy a bunch of files out of here, let's say you had a bunch of stuff in your home folder, you can come into here and copy it out. Obviously, I don't have anything here. My home folder, I usually always use a separate drive for all my personal data. But needless to say, this is a good way to access EXT4 in Windows.